Hi, I'm Derek Morrison, and welcome to our third annual BYO podcast, Secret Santa Blind Tasting episode. For this year's Christmas episode, we've got a fantastic panel of guests from all across the world, from exotic places as far as the Greek islands and as far flung as Newcastle. We've got Sean from the Geordie Wine Guide, Hara from Hedonism Wines in Mayfair, and Claire from Wine Source, one of London's leading importers and distributors in the UK. Thank you so much to Hedonism Wines for hosting us for this episode. One of the world's most impressive wine establishments. They've got a dynamic retail space in Mayfair, London, where you can find thousands and thousands of bottles of wines from all across the world and vintages as far back as the 1700s. You can find them online at www.hedonism.co.uk. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm really excited. This is our third BYO Christmas uh, special episode. So um, really great to share some wines with you. I can't wait to see what everyone's brought for their secret Santa blind tasting. Um, we're just starting off with a little bit of champagne from uh, Don Corlet that uh, uh, Claire is um, able to tell us a little bit about. But cheers to everyone for coming and look forward to cheers, cheers. sharing some great wines. Cheers, nice to see you all. Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, Claire, what can, you, what can you tell us about this uh, champagne? Yeah, so the maker is Don Grelet and uh, made by the son actually now. He took over a few years ago. Adrien is a very talented 28 years old guy. Don Grelet is based in a tiny village called Flavigny. Flavigny is just three kilometers away from Avis. The vast majority of their vineyards are coming from the Côte de Blanc. Here we are with a uh, Cuvée Les Terfines. Uh, L'Etherfin is 100% uh, Chardonnay, uh, coming from a village called Cui, uh, premier, premier cru, not Grand Cru. And what Adrien likes to do is to always look at two different villages, Cui and Cramant, and he will produce a non-vintage in uh, each uh, village, and then he will have a UD on each village as well. Here we are on the base of 2016, which is 75, uh, 70%, and the rest, the 30%, are coming from what we call a reserve perpetuelle. So it's kind of a Solera system, but it's not like a barrel stack on top of each other, like in Sherry, for example. In Champagne, and especially at Don Grelet, it's in a big tank. The first vintage that entered uh, this Reserve Perpetuelle was 1986, which is the year his parents started the estate. So here you have pretty much, because it's 2016, uh, 30 years of Chardonnay from Cuy. It's really tense. It's got a real focus. Um, it's really, certainly on the palate, really saline. Um, yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, salinity is a, is a fingerprint, I will, I will say, across the whole range. So for the Secret Santa episode, um, it's blind tasting, so everyone's brought a wine to serve blind that's kind of a gift for somebody else around the table. So we'll start with uh, Claire, you brought a bottle for me, I guess. Yes. All right. Merry Christmas. Why don't you open it so I don't see the cork and then um, we'll, we'll pour it out and see, uh, see what it is. Sure. All right. Champagne looking. Oh, wow. It's got a really quite rich nose. This tastes very luxurious. <laughs> it's Christmas. Absolutely. You've definitely pushed the boat out. Well, it's quite an opulent champagne. Quite intense, quite ripe, quite full in the nose and the mouth. It feels like there's a bit of age, maybe a bit of barrel. Um, it's quite tense and a saline as well, though, on the palate. Like, it's got quite a, it's quite mouth filling. It's quite a bit of, like, a robust structure. But then the finish is very, very saline. At first on the nose, I started kind of thinking Henri Giraud. It was kind of had like this like richness, this fullness, this kind of um, earthy toffee opulence, but on the palate is really focused. So I'm not sure. It's not as, it's, it seems, it's quite youthful um, in spite of some of those kind of like that tertiary richness. It would have been probably even richer for Henri Giraud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And much, much more barrel impact. What about English pet nut? Have you ruled that out? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more surprised if Claire brought, Claire brought that. Then. But nah, this, is, this is very serious wine. It's funny, on the nose, it, because it has some of that kind of, there's a bit of earthiness there that's like either some like extended lees aging or something, um, or maybe a bit of pinot. 
on the palate, it's so clean and tense and bright that I think it's more Chardonnay. That depth kind of gives me, it's more yellow bright, it's kind of the flavors on the palate. So it makes me think it's more Chardonnay, but then there might be a bit of Pinot or just some aging on it. But again, it's so youthful on the palate that I don't think it's, I don't think it's edible, but it doesn't feel too young to drink. Oh, this is tough. We're gonna lock it in. I mean, I'm not gonna be right. Is it champagne? It's champagne. Is it a Lodit? No, think style rather than region or anything yeah. else, or even people or uh, barrel. So yes. a little bit of barrel. It's uh, is it a vintage? It's not a vintage. So if it's not a vintage, what does it mean? Because I'm getting lots of sort of older flavors, just very subtle, as well as the fresh stuff. So I'm I'm thinking maybe a Solera one that we were <coughs> talking about before. A lot of yeah. reserve wine. Yeah. Some reserve wine, yeah. A lot of reserve wine. To give that so oldy who, character. Who, who does barrel and a lot of reserve wine? Well, there's a, a Monsieur Salas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that finish, though, mm. at the end, it's finish very great. clean, it's very different. Are we in the right ballpark, then, no. if we say Salas? That's, that's Southwest Champagne, isn't it? I think it? it's got a bit of time post-disgorgement as well. Like, I don't think this was disgorged super recently. Because the texture on the palate is like fresh. Two, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't taste as old as like substance. No. It's, um, it's not Celos. Um, Cedric it's, Bouchard's in that area, isn't he? It's my all time favorite champagne. <laughs> so, what was the grapes in it then? Do you think there's just Chardonnay in this? There is a bit of Chardonnay, but it's not the majority. It's majority Pinot? Yes. Did we decide if it is a grower or a big house? Ah, that's an interesting fact. I just assumed it was a grower. Yeah. You know, we were talking about salinity, weren't we? So are we in that, um, that southwest region? No. No, we're not? No. So it's we're in the Pinot Noir uh, Ambonnet. Is it Rodez? It's a Rodez. So good. And the first time I brought it to you was corked. Is it Blanc de Blanc? No, no, sorry, no. it's the Blanc de Noir. No, Blanc. the Brut Zero. Yeah. It's the Brut Zero, Dosage Zero. Merry Christmas. Eh, I know this guy. Dosage Zero, Eric Rodez. One of my absolute favorites. Yeah. When you think about uh, Dosage Zero, and uh, you, you, we, did, uh, we did a champagne showcase with you guys, a lot of people were uh, very skeptical about uh, Zero Dosage wines, and say everything that I tried is super acidic. Uh, so uh, it reminds me why I love this wine so much and uh, for me it's the perfect wine to do blind because he's using very ripe grape uh, a lot a lot of back vintage as a reserve and for Eric he's so meticulous if he says zero dosage then it has to be big and full and exuberant a beautiful wine I love his wines as soon as I started to feel like the that texture just had a, when I thought it was Chardonnay, I was thinking it was the Blanc de Blanc, but it didn't quite. It had a bit more yeah, because depth because it was obviously yeah, more because the it's, Pinot. It's Blanc de Blanc as well. It's a Pinot Noir from Montbonnet, which mm -hmm. is a, which is a big Pinot Noir terroir as well. Yeah. Uh, I always call his Blanc de Blanc to be a, more like a wintry, Christmassy kind of uh, Blanc de Blanc, very spicy and rich and full. Something that you. It's very rare too that you meet a winemaker who you like as much or more than their wines. And he's definitely one of the people that I like as much as his wines. Yes. He's just one of those personalities that's just so he's endearing, artistic. He's just uh, yeah, really inspiring person. I think if he was making bad wine, I would still like the wines because the guy <laughs> is so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks God. Yeah. Fortunately, the champagnes are stunning. <laughs> Right, so what you got in your glass now is your secret Santa gift. Oh, there thank you. you. See what you think. Let's start tasting. What do you reckon? Quite aromatic, tense, what quite you, rich as well. What are you getting palette. on the nose? I get a lot of citrus and pear, a lot of pear in the, of pear. Pear. In the palate too. I don't know, I find it really intense. Yeah, it's a big one. Can I ask for a clue? 
What about the country first? That, that would be great. Ah, you went to the country first. I would go to the variety, probably. Oh, uh, yeah, grape variety. I yeah. don't know. Sounds like you like, nailed the grape variety. I don't think it's a blend. It has nice acidity, like quite complex. What about grape then? I think it will go great with the turkey on Christmas Day. It could. I yeah. thought this had a little bit of like Christmassy spice to it. Oh, it's good. You know, yeah. like it's spiced kind of pears, tartatan. Yeah. It's like a tartatan in a glass. I think it's from a warm climate region. A warm region. Mm. It's not that warm, really. Not that warm. In the summer, they have nice summers. <laughs> a few of them have swimming not pools. Not Greek summers, I guess. Sweden. <laughs> it's Sweden. <laughs> there is a chance you get sunburned in the summer. Oh, yeah. That fruit, the, the fruit is so ripe though. So if it's not a warm climate, it's definitely, I mean, I think it's got a warm vintage element to it. It's, it's got like that ripe pear, ripe peach, that kind of like those ripe stone fruits. Is it dry or off dry? It's not a Riesling. Nope. No. Not a Rizzo. What about know. country then? You re he really wants you to guess the country. I know, why? I don't know, it's probably from somewhere know, weird. It's weird <laughs> <laughs> I would say New World. What, what, kind of, what kind of grapes do you think it's from, other than white? In the beginning, when I first smelled it and tasted it, I thought that it could be kind, kind of a Viognier. Viognier, mm. right. I think now it is like opening up. It doesn't give me that, the notes of Viognier that you like normally find. Like a Chateau Grille or something? Yes, something a bit more unusual. I haven't got the budget for that though. Grille. Sorry, I said it wrong as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared to say anything French now. <laughs> I could also say like Grenache Blanc or Gris. Grenache, yeah, Grenache can make wines that are quite full. And mm -hmm. Would there be this lip smacking though? It gets in your cheeks, doesn't it, that acidity? I really like it, for the record. Like I'm smashing it. It has a slight oxidized, but just like a hint. Yeah. What did you say of dry before? Do you want me to give you my tasting notes of this? No, just a clue. Oh, you want some clues? Old, uh, you said New World. I said New World. Uh, it's actually Old World. It is old. Yeah, okay. it's coolish climate. It's not. It's definitely not a warm climate. Is it a single variety? Single variety. Yeah. I can tell you that the, yeah. the grapes have actually been on the on the vines quite a long time. Later, late-ish harvest. Late harvest. But this, it hasn't got botrytis, really. A little bit of honey creeping in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To me, it's toffee apple. Toffee apple. Could it be like traditional, like Alsace region, maybe? Not a bad guess. Yeah, almost, but maybe the other end of the country, but similar climate. Climate. Was she, was so she... we're in France. In France. Yeah. All right, it's from the Loire, which is quite a big region. So you've got. It's a Muscadet. A Muscadet. Yeah, late harvest or something, or almost late harvest. It's not Muscadet. It's a Chenin. 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 I used to say Shenin, but now I say Shinna. I'm Canadian, I'll, I pronounce that every correct, letter. Correct? Uh, Is that correct? Shinna. Shinna, but there they call it Shna. Shna. I heard that you, you're not meant to pronounce the C at the end, are you? You know if you say Shenan Blanc, you don't say the C at the end. So where, where, where actually in, uh, in Loire are we? Well, I can tell you what the soil was, if that helps, but that might give it away. I don't, I don't know if it's uh, schist, we know where exactly where we are. It doesn't schist. taste like schist, though. Schist soils. Schist. Yeah. With a few bits of quartz. Um, uh, Langerie area. This, this is a very special vineyard. It's sheltered, it's got forest around it, it's got loads of life, very old vines, uh, really wild. And they, they have a little breeze that comes through, which means that the grapes can, can stay healthy on the vine for, for a long time. So very late harvest. Uh, this, this would be classed okay. as, as Unicorn Shinna. So it's in the Unicorn Club. Uh, very hard to find. But you'll notice there's a slight bit of um, residual sugar, yeah. mm -hmm. which can give you a, a hint as but to... But it it's not Coulis de Serran, which is like, it no, doesn't no, have no, any it, of that it, personality. It's, it's not Coulis de Serran and it's not uh, Rochamoine either. I think it might be a bit cleaner than Nicolas Jolie's yeah. wines. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really rich. It's got a wonderful texture. It's still fresh. It, I mean, that off dry, like, I, it's almost... Claude Lécu or something like this? I can reveal it, because we're basically yeah, there. Yes. So we're in, we're in Anjou, we're in, we're in the, the greatest region for dry-ish yes. Chenin. Yes. Um, and this is from Chateau de Bonazo. Oh, wow. This is unicorn wine, this is very rare. No UK importer. And this, the lady who makes this wine trained under Marc Angeli. 
he makes a wine that has a little bit of sweetness that's similar like toffee apple spicy mm -hmm. pear nice nice area i've been there on my holidays Beautiful. this bottle wine. was quite difficult to get because the, there wasn't any wine at the domain so i had to go around a few shops and ask around and every shop i went into they were like i don't know what you're talking about i love it because it's really powerful it's got loads of energy and I, I thought I would spread the love because it's Christmas and there's not many of these bottles around. I think the, they've only got two barrels of this wine. And also it's, it's well documented that I've drank it as well. So it's good for me reputation. <laughs> See what I've been drinking. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. I love it. Yes. I don't drink enough Chenin, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, that's quite complex. Great acidity. Uh, great profile, I think. And I really like it. Yeah. Merry Christmas. I'm the chosen one. You are the chosen one this year. <laughs> Hope we will enjoy. Let's see. Ah, it's white. Super light. It's super light color. You want some? Yes, please. What's with all the whites? Everyone has big reds at Christmas, don't they? Yes, I think. Yeah. Going against the grain. I think everyone fancy a white Christmas. It's very light. It's very fresh. The first nose that I had was uh, yeast, okay. so lots of leaves still. Mm -hmm. There are a bit of leaves there, true. Very citrusy, floral, delicate, mm -hmm. pear, almonds. Right. Yeah. Quite complex, no? Yes, it's, it's, not too, it's not one dimensional, there is uh, different layers. No oak. It tastes like ouzo. Got this aniseed. No. This, this aniseed. <laughs> I would thing. expect it to see that. Also, no. Well, there's, there's none of that Christmas tree pine resin stuff. But I can see why people would have those at mm. Christmas. Is that that wine that's got the pine resin in the barrel, isn't it? Yeah, but that's proper any, Christmassy. That. Anymore. No, but some of them do smell a bit piney. Yeah. It's like when you you put your Christmas tree in your house to to have your house smelling not like uh, like pine. The salinity is out of this world. You think maybe from an island? It could be. So how many <laughs> islands could it be <laughs> from if it's Greek? Look, in Greece we have more than 2,500 so islands, so... So that narrows it down. It's one or two, two and a half thousand islands. I didn't say it's from an island, though. Okay. Uh, at first it reminded me a little bit like, uh, like an Italian white blend from Friuli, something like okay. this. But I've got way more weight and texture than, and also the salinity. It's almost, so the, the, the bitterness is very appealing. Mm -hmm. It's like Gewurztraminer from volcanic soil on an island. It's like, it's got that kind of floral, ah. aromatic kind of bitterness, but saline. Yeah. The Greek grape varieties are really hard yeah. to pronounce. Is it uh, Greek? Moscofilero or Moscofilero. something? Uh, no, it's what? not Moscofilero. I will give you that clue. It is not. Moscow what? Moscow filler. Let's, let, let's get the elephant out. Let's, let's clear the elephant in the room. Is it Greek? Uh, it's definitely old world. It is. It is old world. Does, does it remind you of any grape variety? Of the international ones, maybe? Well, not so much, actually. Uh, I'm more with uh, something more uh, quirky, indivi uh, indigenous. Uh, and for me, it definitely has that Mediterranean feel. Could it be like, it reminds me a bit of something like Friuli or like... It reminds me of Veneto. Yeah, something like Kinderelli. Kinderelli. You know Kinderelli's entry yeah. level wine with the red? Uh, yes, no, uh, it's a blend of like it's a white Pinot one. Bianco yeah. and... No, you but for me, yeah. we're more on a blend yeah. rather than, mm -hmm. a, than a single grape variety. Okay. It's quite complex as a wine. A little bit of nectarine and... It's, 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 it's also got this aromatic profile that is kind of... And that bitterness. I, I mean... It, I'm trying to it's, think of what other kind of aromatic bitter varieties. It's discreet, it's not like, an, like, it's not like it's, Gegevur Straminer yeah. up in your, in your face. Yeah. It's very delicate. Yes. Um, That's the characteristic of this grape variety. It's, so it's one grape. It is one grape, <laughs> yes. Could it, could it be Greek, like? Greece's signature white grape? It, I mean, it's, it has a very, very faint hint of aniseed, kind of like liquor. Yeah. What, what, I, which is kind of a certico, but doesn't remind me of a certico any other way. It, like it's it doesn't, really and also for me the, the weight, it's a, uh, it is doesn't a have the acidity of a certico. No, it doesn't and, uh, have the, the minerality a, uh, of quite an a, a bit of alcohol as well. Mm -hmm. 
it but is kind of if, uh, I mean, fat and rich as fat well. Fat and rich and yes. visceral. What about yes. Malvasia? Uh, doesn't have that kind of funk or intense aromatic, but I mean, it could Malvasia be. is uh, quite aromatic, very full yeah, on. You, sometimes you could say. It's just yes. that little almond thing that reminds me of it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, do you. You understand why I went to Moscow Filero first, yes. like for the yes, very because it's quite pretty aromatic pretty and floral. pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It has yeah, for, for me. It's more like almost uh, like frulano or like kind of mm. garganega or yeah. something like this. Ah, yeah, of. it does smell a bit like uh, friulano. Yeah. So that is interesting Greece, why it, you say that because if we say that it's from Greece and smells like friulano, like from the region of uh, yeah. Friuli, we are in a colder, cold yes. climate yeah. region, no? We want it to be Greece. Mm -hmm. We want it, but uh, <laughs> but we think it might be Italy. Italy. Yeah, yeah, we're not. Well, it is not Italy, if I can help. Is it Greece? Oh, that's good. <laughs> it is Greece indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very predictable, sorry. You've got to represent your country, man. I have to. I, I'm thinking I should have brought an English pet nut now. You could, yeah. But I wouldn't have, wouldn't have stood up against that champagne, would it? For me, it's one of the yeah. perfect uh, aperitif kind mm -hmm. of wine. You don't really need food. Mm -hmm. Or if you need, f uh, or if you have food, you need salty things. Yes. I don't know what it is about this wine, but when I drink it, I feel like I'm on a beach. Yeah. The saltiness and yes. the freshness. Yeah. It's almost like an oyster shell, like yes. a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. It has a fruitiness. It has a lot of yeah, that saltiness, touch of minerality mm. in the aftertaste. The aromatic profile is not too big. It's like quite low and elegant. Mm. You have the fruit there. Yeah. It is one variety. Are we in the Cyclades or are we? We are indeed. So well Sant done. Sant uh, Santorini? It's no? not no? Santorini. Tino? Uh, t uh, Tino? Very, very close. Okay. Very close to Tino's. You're hitting <laughs> okay. there. Well done. Jesus Christ. That is some <laughs> obscure <laughs> shit. It is the season. No, I have to say well done. Yes. You're good, man. Very well done. Well, I will reveal it. It's yeah. from uh, the why island. Don't you, why don't you unwrap yes. your yes. present? Do you know any producers from there then? And Tinos is quite uh, far out uh, Tinos is a bit, no, it's not from, the, from Santorini, yes. but there are quite a lot of islands around. Yes. I will let you reveal the wine first, the bottle. Oh my goodness, uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think I need some help for the reading. <laughs> Sheriff <laughs> Fatman. You know what, if I was going to guess the country and I didn't know you were Greek, yeah. I would have probably said Greece just because it smells like ouzo. It's got honestly. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Honestly, proper yeah. ouzo y. It, you could have served this without wrapping it. Nobody can read the Greek. It's <laughs> so, I the label. I will tell you about the label. It's a uh, quite interesting story. So, we are in the island of uh, Syros. The grape variety is called Serifiotico, like coming from Syros. Uh, it's a native grape variety uh, from the island of Serifos. Uh, there are a few plants in the island of Serifos, but the majority of the plants are the, on the island of Syros. Uh, so that Sheriff Fatman, it's kind of a mock of the grape variety, like Sheriff, Serifiotico, Fatman, because it's a rich grape variety. As you described it perfectly, I think. The winemaker, he used to, he He's a very young uh, guy. Uh, he used to produce beer in Greece. Uh, he got tired of producing beer. He's an enologist. And he decided to um, go to the island of Syros, open a very, very tiny, sm small uh, winery, garage winery, 50 square meter. And this is a native grape variety. He managed to work with the local uh, producers work well in the vineyard and then produce a single uh, variety wine. So he opened the winery in 2011 and uh, 2018 is the first vintage of uh, the Sheriff Fatman of Serifiotico. We don't know if it can age or not. I think it drinks Nicely yeah. now. Yeah. I like it. I'm going to turn me light no, on for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no lighty, it's no lighty. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of a beer style uh, yes, label indeed. because it's of his background. He okay, used to produce yes. uh, beer in Greece. Then but in all honesty, uh, all honesty, it does smell like a wheat beer a little bit. Yeah, yeah the way that, that, that kind of fruit you see. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. A bit hopsy. Yes. No, that, that, like quite, that, that strong Maybe kind of that leaves essence on the nose. Maybe that's what you said, yes. 
Well, it's very hard to pin down to the place, but it's an amazing discovery and uh, thank you for uh, sharing it. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't good. just to bring something that you have never tasted, but something interesting and different. It, 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 and, and Greek. Take more Greek. And Greek always. <laughs>
I'll let you tell us the details. So it's a 2011 Quintarelli um, Cardel Merlo Rosso, which is, so it's one of his uh, declassified wines. So this has got Merlot in it. Um, well, actually, it's, I mean, it's predominantly Corvina, Corvina Rosso, they're kind of like, um, I think there's a bit of Nebbiolo, they're kind of ne Negrara, they're like the main Valpolicella blend. It's quite raisiny. But then he also has uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. Right. As in a portion of the blend, which is basically the only difference between that and the Valpolicella that he does. Which is still go through some Passamento, doesn't have as long of an aging, it's still declassified, so it's not an Amarone, it's not just a simple still Valpolicella. Um, so there's still some Passamento process. I think that 2011 was the first vintage of the Sun, um, but 2011 is quite a, a good vintage, but quite a hot vintage as well. So you got a lot of spiky, spiky wines, but I think this wine, you know, does really well. It's quite ripe. It's got good balance. It still has that character, that style. But you know, when you feel that that style of the wine, it kind of pulls you to the south, right? Because that kind of overripe element in some of the fruit. The way that we've been smashing this wine, you, when you find out there's 15% alcohol. It's quite ridiculous yeah. how balanced it is. Yeah. I, I, it's going I down like. I think that's a thing for like you know for for great wine, right? Is it, it great? You don't find wines that are imbalanced that like find balance over time. If the alcohol is disjointed, it's always disjointed, uh, in my opinion. It's got to be balanced from day one. Yes. Yeah. Um, you don't really have like high alcohol wines that the alcohol settles it, down so much. It's and so it's cool. not powerful at the same time. Uh, even even on the nose, you know, or you, you will. Had some something you will you will expect something that is even more powerful and big and punchy and actually it's uh, very much uh, tutti frutti very elegant very uh, it's chewed fruits rather than uh, than anything before tasting yeah. you could say that it could yes. be a Bordeaux Bordeaux yeah, on blend the, on the know? nose you get this like, herbaceous like, earthiness yeah, almost yeah, Cabernet yeah, Franc yeah, on the nose yeah. but like, uh, so one of my first impression was to uh, like uh, towards like a Zinfandel uh, something that is uh, yeah. lots of, lots of uh, big red fruit and stewed and lots of alcohol at the same time so, the yeah. thing that put me off was, you know, because some of the grapes would be dried, wouldn't they? So it's a bit like raisiny, and you get those, those dried fruit flavors as well as the freshness. That really put me off with the age. I think you feel that a little bit. Like, I mean, Corvina kind of has that, like, that bitter, dark, big ripeness. So when the, when it raisins, you get that, yeah, that. And it throws fig. you off because you think that it's a really well stored old bottle. Yeah, and so you get like these kind of tertiary elements or these kind of like more matured flavors, but then you get this young, youthful freshness as well. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a playful wine to blind taste, but um, I think really once, well. once you land that it's Valpolicella and then you start to look at the balance and the style, it's, it starts to become kind of Quintarelli. Yes. And then if you look at his portfolio, the, their portfolio of wines, um, but you know, it's who, kind of... Who in Val Valpolicella is, about, is able to produce something like this? To produce because something so drinkable. Yes, because otherwise the, uh, the other uh, big star will be Dalfono, but Dalfono yeah. is yeah. super concentrated, yeah. and yeah. hence why I say Contarelli straight, because it's not concentrated yeah. at all. This bottle's not going to last very long. No. Yeah. You've got the best secrets on that, I think. <laughs> yeah, what, can I, what can I say? <laughs> one, of the, one of the best secret Santa gifts I've ever received. Thanks, thanks Derek. Cheers, guys. Cheers. That calls for a tenner, you know, secret Santa. <laughs> but we need pizza. This is definitely a pizza wine. Yes. Merry Christmas, guys. <laughs>